Unity is basically just drawing a line in the sand saying, if you want to create a competitive and fast paced multiplayer game in Unity, you have to use netcode for entities, meaning you have to use ECS. Last week, the annual Game Developers Conference, or GDC, took place in the city of San Francisco, and it's an event where game developers from all around the world gather to talk about games. It's also a place where game developers might go to find a publisher for their game, and it's really just an excellent event filled with a ton of passionate people who develop games for their job, as a hobby, or maybe they're just learning it as a student, or some combination of the three. And this year, as I do for most years, I was happy to be an attendee of the event. So anyways, I wanna talk a little bit about you know my experience at the event but specifically as it relates to Unity's data-oriented technology stack. Now, although there may not have been a lot of groundbreaking announcements for Unity Dots, there are definitely a lot of interesting things that were brought up that really give us some good information about you know, where Dots is right now and where it's going to be in the near future. Now, if you do also kind of want a more broad overall view about you know, all the things that Unity was talking about at the event, I'm gonna go ahead and point you to some of the other creators that I was with at that event. I know CodeMonkey has his recap video up as well, and I was with a bunch of other creators, and I'll go ahead and post links to their channel down below, as I'm sure they're gonna be doing similar recap videos in the days and weeks to come. And also just a few hours after this video, goes live, I'm going to be doing a live stream over on Jason Wyman's channel. We're going to be talking about kind of our overall experience at the event. Now, before moving on, I would just like to say that this video is sponsored by Unity. Unity graciously paid for my GDC pass as well as all my expenses related to the trip. So really just want to thank Unity for inviting me out to this event and allowing me to spend the week with some other awesome Unity creators. I think it was just a really good opportunity for us to all kind of hang out with each other, get a good idea of, you know, what kinds of things that we're trying to do with our channel and our businesses, and really just understand everyone's goals so that we can you know, all figure out ways to help each other in the future. So I think it's really awesome that Unity is not only encouraging collaboration between us creators, but they're doing things to, you know, really bring us together and being able to work much more closely. So anyways, thank you, Unity. Now let's go ahead and talk about Unity's data-oriented technology stack. Now before we get into some of the specifics of things that were brought up during GDC, I just kind of want to start with an overall picture of kind of, you know, what the sentiment of Dots and sort of where it's at right now. So of course, the important part now is that Dots is a Officially fully supported through official Unity support channels. So that basically means, you know, anything related to the data or to technology snack and the entity component system. If you're having any issues with that, you can go through the official support channels and receive support on the product. Now, as of today, the day that I'm making this video, it's still technically in its pre-release format. So it doesn't have a full, you know, official release just quite yet. That official release is still gonna be coming out when the 2022 version of the Unity Editor goes into the long-term support version. There unfortunately is not a date when the Unity 2022 LTS is going to be released, but trust me, it's going to be a freaking party over on the Turbo Makes Games YouTube channel when that day comes. Now, that being said, it's not all necessarily going to be sunshine and rainbows because Unity is getting its full production ready release finally. A little bit of a side effect of that is Unity just doesn't know the kind of demand that they're going to be getting when a lot of people, you know, finally start adopting ECS in production for the first time. You know, they don't know if they're going to be having to support a bunch of teams or if, you know, a bunch of more new bugs get discovered because of the you know, hopefully flood of new people coming to ECS. So because of that, a lot of their engineers are transitioned into a more support and bug fix type role where they're going to be assisting developers who, you know, maybe have issues with it or are going to be resolving bugs along the way. So unfortunately, because of that, you know, many of the people who might have been developing new features for the engine, they're gonna be in kind of this more support role just to make sure that everything is solid for all the newcomers to ECS. So unfortunately, because of that, we don't have a whole lot of concrete timelines about you know, when new features are going to be added to the engine. So basically as of right now, you know, what's available for us right now is what we're going to be having for kind of the short term future right now. Now, later on in this video, I'm gonna be answering some questions that were asked by some people in my Discord community. Some of them were regarding new features coming to DOS. And unfortunately, that's going to be pretty much the answer. Although I do have some updates on a couple things like Dots Animation. Don't get your hopes up too much though. Another really important thing that I did want to bring up is I had the pleasure with meeting with a number of executives at Unity over the course of the week and was able to garner some of their thoughts and opinions on Dots. 
Now, keep in mind that these are people who have you know, varying levels of technical understanding about you know, what exactly DOTS is and how it works, but I'm pleased to say that the general sentiment on DOTS from their perspective was very positive. And the main reason being for this is because they are seeing successful games out in the wild that take advantage of these data-oriented technology stack features. And trust me, they do hear the feedback from these developers saying, you know, there's literally no way that we could make the vision for our game if it wasn't for Unity's data or the technology stack. So I personally see that as a really important thing that these executives are really taking value into you know, what DOTS is and that it does things that other engines just simply do not. And because of that, at least as of right now, my general feeling is that DOTS is pretty safe right now and it's not something that's going to be just you know cut out of the editor um, and just abandoned just kind of like overnight. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and start diving into some of the specific things that were brought up at GDC. So Unity basically had a dev summit day where basically just all of Tuesday they did a bunch of topics on a wide variety of things. So it started off with a roadmap session and then there are two other sessions that I do wanna talk about today. There was one specific on dots and there was also a multiplayer session and that is where things get really spicy. Now, all these talks are eventually going to be uploaded to YouTube. Right now, only the roadmap session is up, but definitely pay attention to Unity's YouTube channel as they will be uploading the remainder of the sessions you know, over the next weeks or months or whenever they or feel compelled to. So anyways, kicking things off with the roadmap session, um, again, because this is just kind of like a general overview of everything that's going on in Unity, um, Dots just kind of got like a small little section of it. Now it was announced that Dots is, you know, finally in production ready and fully supported and all that. Um, and it did get a nice little clap and, you know, cheer <laughs> from the audience. So that was uh, definitely cool to see some excitement for Dots in the crowd on that. I think everyone knows that it's just been kind of, you know, a long journey to get to this point. So it's, it's really exciting that, uh, you know, Unity finally kind of followed through on this vision that they've had for so many years now. Um, and here we are. Um, but again, unfortunately, no real, you know, major announcements about new DOTS features or anything like that. Again, most of it's just going to be kind of related to um, stability, making sure that it works for everybody. Uh, one important thing that I did want to mention is that, you know, as some of these issues are discovered and they find fixes for them in, say, some of the newer versions of DOTS that may be coming out in the future, they do plan on backporting these to the, you know, core one. 0.0 version that's working on the you know 2022 LTS because it being you know long-term support they do want to you know have those bug fixes coming in for the long term now what I will say for those of you who are looking for new dots features definitely make your voices heard on the unity feedback page on the dots roadmap page I'll go ahead and again leave that link down below there's gonna be so many links in this description and you guys are gonna have a thousand tabs open after watching this video um, but seriously go check out the dots roadmap page and leave your feedback on there I talked to a number of people at unity and they all were always telling me how you know they're literally reading through the these feedbacks coming in every single day and it is really important and valuable to them so again if there are any specific features that you would like to see added to dots definitely go ahead and provide that feedback on the dots roadmap page because they are looking for them and the more they see of specific features the more they're going to prioritize those specific features now there was something new related to dots brought up during this roadmap session and that is the dots tools that are now a part of the Rider IDE. So as many of you know, during my tutorial videos, I use JetBrains Rider as my code editor, and they've built in a whole bunch of new dots specific tools that really just automate a lot of things in dots, and they're extremely nice to use. I've been using them a little bit over the past couple of days, and they've been really, really excellent. Um, do plan on making some content going a little bit deeper into the specifics of these things, but if you do want to check it out for yourself, you already know that's gonna be linked in the description below. So that pretty much does it for the general Unity roadmap session. Now the next session I wanna talk about is the Dots specific one, put on by Dots project manager and friend of the channel, Laurent Gibert. So we pretty much kicked off the talk just by giving a quick overview about you know, what Dots is and what are some of its primary use cases. Then you brought up a gentleman onto the stage named Justin of Sunblink Studios, and they created a game called Hero-ish, which is a top-down multiplayer action game. And they wanted to have the ability to have a fairly large number of units on the playing field. Now, this being a cross-platform network game, they want it to be able to work on all different platforms, ranging from a high-end PC all the way 
down to a mobile device and it being multiplayer, of course, they want this everything to basically easily translate across the network, even with a fairly large number of units. So the bulk of this talk was just kind of them discussing about, you know, how they leveraged ECS to develop their game and some of the problems that it kind of helped them solve. And it was just really cool to see them essentially leverage data oriented design because they had kind of initially built out a prototype of this game, um, but really taking care to separate the gameplay from the visuals. And they actually didn't have it networked to begin with. So they kind of a little bit on into development they went ahead and actually made the game a networked game and just kind of you know went through all their systems and say oh i want you know this system to run on the server and i want this system to run on the client and so on and they said they were you know ended up being quite surprised that everything just kind of worked when they got to that point you know they just you know put everything up on the server that's running all the gameplay logic and didn't have any rendering with it and then on the client side they had you know more the rendering and input systems and all that types of stuff so definitely cool to see a nice use case of dots definitely go check that video out when it's available then the final dev session that i wanted to bring up is unity's multiplayer session which was put on by product manager of unity's multiplayer and friend of the channel, Laurent Gibert. And this talk was another one of these showcase type talks where basically they had three representatives from different types of games. Um, so there was one game called A Ship of Fools and this one was representing games created with netcode for game objects. There was another one called Turbo Golf Racing and this one was basically representing building a game off of Unity's custom transport layer where Unity basically provides you a very low level API to create a custom network framework. And then finally there was a representative of the game Hysteria Area, which is a game made with netcode for entities. Now, before they really got into the talk, there was something interesting that was discussed. They were basically talking about the different types of use cases for these different network stacks. One really interesting thing that was discussed is that basically they were saying that netcode for game objects is pretty much only suitable for casual and cooperative play games. If you're looking to do anything competitive, action-based, fast-paced, anything like that, any first-person shooters, racing games, and so on, you must use netcode for entities. And if you're using netcode for entities, you need to be using ECS. So it's really interesting that Unity is basically just drawing a line in the sand saying, you know, no, there's no way that you're gonna get netcode for game objects to run a competitive fast paced game. If you wanna create a competitive and fast paced multiplayer game in Unity, you have to use netcode for entities, meaning you have to use ECS. So that was really surprising to me about how much emphasis Unity is putting on netcode for entities and thus ECS. Because I'm sure there are a lot of people who want to make these types of games and if they're using unity they're going to need to learn ecs to make these games so i guess that kind of puts my channel in a pretty good position i'd say um, so because of that i'm definitely going to be prioritizing you know getting back to learning netcode for entities and definitely going to be creating some content on it i just kind of want to put this out there to make kind of a you know commitment to it my next long format tutorial is going to be on creating a game with netcode for entities May still be a little bit of a while to until that one releases because I gotta, you know, again, kind of learn everything again and, and play around with it and figure out what kind of game I want to make. Um, but yeah, definitely looking forward to it. It's gonna be a fun one. But again, I thought this was another really good session overall. Um, it was super interesting to hear all the different stories from people um, you know, about some of the problems they faced during development and how they solved those issues. And I'll share with you a funny interaction that I had with uh, one of the people on stage um, after the event. So the uh, guy from Turbo Golf Racing, he came up to me afterwards. He's like, dude, you're Turbo. And I was like, dude, you're Turbo. So shout out to Turbo Golf Racing by Huge Calf Studios. You got a cool looking game. So anyways, I'm just going to end this video off by addressing some of your questions from the Discord. So we have one here who brings up that it's a pain to use VR with sub scenes and if there's any plans to uh, tackle the compatibility in a time frame if possible. Um, unfortunately, this kind of falls into the category of new features coming to the Unity game engine. I didn't mention that there's anything necessarily specific to v you know VR and some of the issues with um, interacting with things in sub scenes, but they are aware of just kind of general issues relating to, um, you know, having game objects and things in sub scenes kind of interact with each other. So that is something that they're looking into, but again, no time frame at this time. Of course, got to have a question on dots animation. I know many people are asking what the heck is going on with this. Um, happy to say that I can confirm that there is something in the works, but unfortunately I don't have any more information on that. Don't have any information about, you know, timelines or what the current development status of it is right now. So that being said, if you're looking for an animation solution to use inside of Dots, 
you're unfortunately going to have to look elsewhere other than Unity's solution because it um, seems like it's still going to be quite a ways off. It seems like though that's going to be kind of the first of the you know new features that they're going to start adding in once kind of the um, you know support period kind of evens out where everyone's kind of you know finished off the supports. Um, but I can confirm that something is in the works, um, but still be maybe be a ways out. If you are looking for an animation solution to use in Dots, I will point you to this forum post by Luke, who basically um, just lists out all the different animation solutions that are currently available to use in Dots, and it's a really thorough overview, so it should be helpful to you if. You're you're analyzing any dots animation solutions. Next up, we have a question brought up about using addressables and subscenes, and if there's going to be anything you know specific related to that. Unfortunately, don't have any updates on any you know specific tools for this specific problem. Um, I would highly recommend though that this is something that should be you know submitted to the feedback page, and if anyone else is you know wants to use addressables with subscenes, which you know definitely seems like a good thing, I um, would highly recommend you to again go over to the dots roadmap leave your feedback over on there. One thing that I will say is during the multiplayer talk, the Hysteria team, um, they did mention how they were using some addressables for some of the visual things. Um, basically, they were just kind of referencing it by the GUID. Um, so you can go ahead and again, once that video is available, hear kind of some of their brief thoughts on that. It wasn't a major point of the talk, but it was something they brought up uh, during the during the talk. Uh, here we have a question about ML agents. Unfortunately, don't have anything definitive on that. Um, I will say that Unity did release kind of a really pretty much nothing teaser video about some of their kind of AI initiatives that they are planning on bringing to the game engine at some undetermined point in the future. I am allowed to say that I did receive a private demo of some of the AI tools that they're building out. Um, they're kind of in the pretty early stages right now, but I will say that Unity has been investigating AI for over the past you know, five years, of course, with things along the lines of ML agents. So I think that you're you know, more likely to see just kind of general AI tools come to the Unity game engine in general um, before we start seeing some dots specific things. So that may be you know, a ways off as well. And they also ask another specific question about uh, developing some visual for being able to make articulation bodies with the dots physics system. Um, do not have any information on that one, unfortunately. Uh, build configurations. This is one that I made a video um, on a couple weeks ago. Build configurations are near and dear to my heart, but unfortunately it seems like they uh, may end up being left behind. We've now seen a couple iterations of uh, new DOTS versions and uh, build configurations have not received an update. Seems like this is most likely something that they're not going to be uh, proceeding with any further. Do not have any concrete evidence on that though. Another interesting theme that was kind of brought up um, over the course of some things over at Unity is they're really kind of trying to do things right. You know, maybe there were a lot of things that were not done correctly the first time around in Unity, and a lot of things have just been kind of, you know, building up off of that. And now they're kind of, you know, trying to go back and, and right some of their wrongs. Now, unfortunately for that, that basically means, you know, recreating a lot of these things from the ground up, which takes a lot of time. So instead of kind of, you know, patching out some particular things and just, you know, fixing kind of some of the core surface issues, I'll give you one simple example that they brought up. Unity Answers. Of course, many of us have gone to the Unity Answers website, and if you go there, you'll see that the uh, characters H and I have now been replaced with dollar sign, dollar sign, anonymous, dollar sign, dollar sign. Now, of course, they could you know figure out some way to fix the kind of specific problem with that, um, but instead, there's really just a lot of issues with the Unity Answers platform and a lot of their websites in general. So um, basically, they are actually creating a completely new version of Unity Answers that's going to be available in the future, and that's going to be kind of the platform to use moving forward. And again, I don't know anything for sure when it relates to build configs, but I could see this as being something that, you know, maybe they're coming up with a better solution, even though I very much love build configs and I made a video about them very recently. Um, and then finally, we have a question saying, are there going to be any efforts to reduce the boilerplate code for ECS or easier to use via visual scripting? And so my answer to this is going to be the new dots tools that have been released in Writer. Um, of course, an excellent code editor that I have been using for a number of years now. Um, and so these now have some dots specific tools built in to automate the creation of things like data components, systems, aspects, jobs, and so on. So at least as of right now, you know, using Rider is going to be your best option for that kind of thing. So anyways, it's kind of like an 
in-depth look of everything that happened related to JOTS at GDC. Um, if you do have any questions for me, feel free to drop those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. Happy to talk much more about uh, my kind of general experience at the event overall, um, you know, for the things that I can talk about, of course. Once again, major thank you to Unity for having me out for this event. Um, so I'm happy to do this sponsored video in return. Um, had such a great time hanging out with people at your company and all the different creators who are all you know, very passionate about making games with your engine. Anyways, with that, hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.